Well, I think a lot of situations like that are cover-ups for other things to get your mind away from whatever it is that's really going on. Sure. Because it's so big, it's hard for the average person to wrap their head around yeah. unless you really get involved in studying it. Mm -hmm. I got fortunate that I found one of the original investigators up in Los Alamos, New Mexico that was called upon by the United States government of going down there investigating the actual uh, event that happened, Ground Zero. <clears throat> when the event happened, uh, now it's going on 25 years, this April will be the 25th year anniversary. Mm -hmm. But I was fortunate enough that I talked to him and he went down there as an expert and an explosion expert working for the military. So and how he, do you make and, a living doing this stuff? And he told me, <laughs> you're full of questions, you're a smart one. You really are. Um, he told me, he said, not only did we as a team tell the Oklahoma authorities that there was no way that a rider truck and 3,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate done this type of damage. But we made gestures that there was not just one bomb, but two bombs and possibly even three bombs that caused that type of in intense damage in that area. And there actually was because there was... This makes me think of the situation in Vegas. There was, yeah. There was uh, someone who took on the orders through Janet Reno through Bill Clinton's administration during the 51-day standoff down at Waco. If you remember, the headquarters got moved out of Texas over into Oklahoma because it was so, such of a high-profile case that they wanted to stay away from the media. <clears throat> and the people in uh, the Mario building there in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, was actually doing the calls towards what was happening in Waco, Texas during that 51-day standoff. Somebody, long about the 40th day, put an order out, said, these people are making fools of us down there. We're going to have to end this one way or the other. And it went from basically being a recover uh, mission to a doomsday mission to the people, the Davidians down in Waco. Somebody brought in probably about two to four boxes of dynamite and put it in the lower part of the Mario building that was supposed to have been used on the Davidians pertaining to the Waco incident that happened in Mount Karma. It just so happens on the 51 day they got lucky with the tank driving off into the building, and they basically caught that place on fire that killed the majority of, of the Davidians. I went down there and investigated the incident and had briefings, invest, you know, conversations with some of the remaining living people uh, pertaining to finding out what actually occurred, and the government basically killed those people. But the person that brought the dynamite into the lower part of the Mario building never took it out, forgot about it, thought it would go away or never had the opportunity of moving it properly. And if you know anything, uh, know anything at all about explosions, dynamite will actually go through a process, kind of like wine that goes through a fermenting process. So will dynamite. Once it's made up, <laughs> <Dynamite wine. laughs> once it's made up in those, in those, in those sticks, those wax, uh, containers that they're in, <clears throat> after a period of days, weeks, months, it will start processing and it will start sweating. Well, the sweat on the outside of that wax is actually nitroglycerin. And it becomes very, very unstable at that point in time to the point that if you had a stick of it in your house and somebody come in your house and slammed the door just right, it could activate that stick of dynamite. Well, because now, because now the dynamite is not dynamite, now it's nitroglycerin. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is the explosion that did, it, did indeed occur pertaining to the 3,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate was so, so forceful that it set the explosion off that was down in the lower part of the basement, and that's what basically opened the whole building up and all the debris, yeah, instead of it going away from the explosion, it went back towards the explosion, which is theoretically impossible. Okay. If you look at, at the building, the way that the building was defaced, all the debris went back towards the rider truck. The debris was supposed to have went the other way indicating that there was something inside the basement that actually caused the death of 170-something people that day. 
Now, I'm not saying that, that, that the rider truck wouldn't have taken out 10, 12, 15, 25 people, whoever was closest to the rider truck, but that's not what killed the majority of the people. You keep in mind there was a daycare center on the, on the uh, second or third yes, floor that killed about 18 children that day. 18 children, babies. Yes, it was awful. And the government is still trying to, to uh, suppress it. Since I have stepped out into the eyes of the general public in 2009, is whenever they were trying to taint me once more again as me being some sort of a bad guy, just simply because I was a whistleblower, there has been another investigating team that has went out that has done extensive uh, uh, surveys on adding more uh, uh, ammonia nitrate to, to a rider truck and blowing it up out in the middle of nowhere and adding, instead of adding diesel fuel, they added airplane fuel, which was a hotter source. Uh, in other words, they really went through spending a lot of money and time towards trying to figure this out, and there was no way humanly possible that that rider truck with 3,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate done that type of damage. Also, there's another tattletale that day in Norman, Oklahoma, which is 20 miles from the ground zero. The Richter scale registered two different scales that day. The first one was like a 2.3, and the second one was like a 4.2, and they was both within a, a millisecond apart. Okay? There was a factory that blowed up in Newtown, Texas a few years ago down by Waco, Texas, that had over 500,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate that blowed up and desecrated about 30 city blocks, killed about 35 people. It was all over the news. Like you said, you're not a news buff. You don't watch TV. But you know what the Richter scale registered in Waco, Texas, which was approximately the same distance, 20 miles from ground zero? What? 2.7. So that would tell you there had to be some additional enhancement to that. To the Oklahoma bombing. Is she not sitting there? What can I? I'm sorry? Oh, okay, let me let you in the room. That's okay, I'll let you in. I'm in, I'm in uh, Cape Girardeau. Missouri, coming back from uh, a funeral memorial service pertaining to my cousin passing away. I stayed all night last night here at this here at this uh, hotel, which has been a very very uh, uh, luxurious experience, quality quality in. And I'm having an opportunity of sitting here talking to the manager as I'm fixing to pack up and uh, going about my merry business. She is originally from Paducah, Kentucky. She was fortunate enough that she has spread her wings around and worked in various areas from uh, Louisville, Kentucky, up towards LaGrange. Uh, now she's down in Florida, down by uh, Tampa, uh, that's basically a hotel general manager that they send her out occasionally from one area to another towards inspecting the hotels and, and making sure that the staff is running correctly and uh, making good uh, influential points. Also, she used to work for uh, uh, an oil company up there until she found out that her boss man was basically a scam artist that was scamming a lot of people out of a lot of money. <clears throat> she worked for him for about five years and she wound up quitting him and getting into the hospitality business which according to her has been one of the most greatest achievements that, you've ever, that she has ever <clears throat> adventured off into because she is originally from Kentucky Actually, she was born in Virginia, but raised up in Paducah. I felt inclined of telling her my story pertaining to what happened not only around the Paducah, Kentucky, Grand Rivers area, 
pertaining to the Kentucky Dam, but I felt inclined to also tell her the story about the Oklahoma, uh, one of the most horrible homegrown terrorist incidences that has ever befallen upon to the American people here in this land. It's been the only reason why that I even wanted to take a little bit of time with her, and I did give her my name and the information towards looking it up, towards what various people has typed up about me out in Oklahoma pertaining to their fake media broadcast that wants to try to bring good innocent people down simply because of people such as myself wanting to investigate and find out the truth about what actually happened. So this is uh, an occurrence, or an occurrence is more than one occurrence uh, that has happened in my life that has been so substantial and so uh, uh, life altering to the extent that that's, that's one of the reasons why that I'm using up so much uh, Facebook media time uh, pertaining to my YouTube channels and getting my social media, my story out there to the general public is because it is substantial. It's not just substantial in my personal life, but it's substantial in all the Christians' lives pertaining to the fulfillment of biblical Bible prophecy that has already been selected, prophesied to happen at a certain particular time in a certain particular area for a certain particular group or era of its existence. That's the reason why that I today am spending so much time by interviewing different people and basically finding out the truth towards where I am and what I'm doing and um, getting facts and getting my stories and um, telling her of different things that, you know, she's a very, very highly intelligent lady uh, that has went beyond the norm of her classmates there in Paducah, Kentucky, that has made it a uh, success out of her life towards becoming an achiever. And you can always tell an achiever um, because they think a little different. Um, they do things a little different. They're, they're not, you know, just like her saying a while ago that uh, she uh, basically did not spend a lot of time towards uh, watching TV growing up as a child and allowing for her children to watch TV because she didn't want to be fed the normal feed of what various people have selected for the American people to be educated in and be educated towards. She's one of the ones that broke loose from the normalcy and she has ventured into society and been very, very successful in doing so. She told me that she had two daughters that's grown up and been doing very well for herself. Um, look me up. The only thing that I ask that when you do, that you don't believe everything about me. Okay. And it's been a pleasure. I do plan Likewise, on... Likewise, I'll give you a card. Mm -hmm. um, I do plan on one day writing a book. Yeah. And possibly even having a novel or a book, I mean a movie. That would be fantastic. Because of all these adventures that I've been through. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's always recognizable Thank to you. me in, in identifying people like you because you're an achiever. You're not part of the 99%. <laughs> you're part of the 1% that was wise enough and smart enough and lucky enough yeah. and fortunate enough pertaining, pertaining to God's blessings to, to the point that you have done this and that didn't work and you've done this and that didn't work and just like the comments that you made with me earlier that this has been one of the most grandest uh, adventures that you've ever achieved towards being in the hospitality business towards working for the hotel chain. But it's my pleasure, and 
Wish you the best of travels. Take care of yourself. You too. Best best of luck to you. Thank you. you I know too. you're gonna make it. You're you're a go getter. <laughs> Thanks so much. I I, I I admire people like you. And I really I do. I appreciate your business. Thank you. Take care. The hotel was beautiful. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed your the stay. Accommod the accommodations was the accommodations was unlike that I've ever seen before. Well, good. I'm the glad bed, your the linings, nice. uh, the color of the carpet, the walls, the the archery that you got on the walls, it was all very pleasant. Well, thank you for your feedback, and I appreciate your business. And God bless you us. Take care. Good luck to all of us, right? Yes. Thanks so much. See you now. Quality and choice. Get your money's worth. Quality and. Quality and. Here in Cape Town. See, we get our local uh, newscasting even whenever we was picking up on freelancing uh, off of free airwaves back years ago out of uh, Cape Girardeau. Cape Girardeau, the way the crow flies from where I live, probably isn't but about it's probably about 120, 130 miles. I'm estimating. I don't know. I'm, that's just the top of my head. It may be a 30 or 40 miles less, and it may be 30 or 40 miles more. I don't know, but give or take, a little over 100 miles. You know, and back whenever I was being reared up in the Northwest Tennessee area, we got Channel 7, WBBJ. We got Channel 6, WPSD. We got Cape Girardeau, and I forgot what their abbreviations was. And we got Channel 11, which was public broadcasting. It <clears throat> was ba basically the extent to our outside communications pertaining to TV up until they started coming out with all these other uh, newly conformed, digitally dish network designed uh, media platforms that now we can pick up our information instantaneously either off of social media or other type of platforms out there that can uh, find out incidences that happen on the other side of the world that will be fed over here to us in literally milliseconds if not minutes uh, we will find out what has occurred when it occurred how it occurred in other parts of the world in other words, the world has suddenly, all of a sudden, become become kind of kind of shrunk in that sense, in a metaphor sense. The world has kind of shrunk due to the fact that uh, we are now interly socially connected to the point that now most everybody knows what most everybody else is doing, which has its positive effects, but at the same time can also have its negative effects depending upon what type of activity that people are engaged in, whether or not the activity is uh, uh, legal and professional or whether or not the activity is illegal and unprofessional. So in the digital era that we're living in, it does have its advantages to some and to others it has its disadvantages. Welcome to the 21st century and thank you for listening and thank you for allowing for me to reach out to my viewers on my particular social media platforms and go to the next adventure involving my life which at the moment I have plans towards going by Lourdes Hospital. Uh, today's Friday, 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 Friday the 17th, uh, 2020, I mean uh, 20 and 20. I have plans of going to Lourdes Hospital and obtaining some records pertaining to my stay there in 19, I think it was 1990 or 1991, right before I left to go to Washington, D.C., whenever Homeland Security decided that they was going to uh, lie or try to entrap me towards me be, being or had becoming some sort of a 
hired assassin to take out George Walter Bush's life in Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, these records, hopefully, that I can obtain today will help to validate the actual occurrence when it occurred because about two months before I went on that little adventure, I wound up in Lourdes Hospital after an automobile had run me completely over and totaled out a brand new Dakota truck that I was driving at the time from Clinton, Kentucky through Union City while I was dating a girl in Troy, Tennessee. Basically almost tried to kill me by taking my automobile, turning it in for in, rolling over into a big Levine, and I had to wind up staying in uh, Lourdes Hospital for several days rec recuperating, during which time that we was bombing Baghdad. I'll never forget that as long as I live because it literally uh, turned my world upside down of me knowing that we was going to war with the wrong people at the time pertaining to the people over in that part of the neck of the woods. So wish me luck towards going to Paducah and going to Lourdes Hospital and obtaining some records. Hopefully they have kept their record uh, keeping in order and hopefully I won't have no problems we, uh, in my travels. We renovated the hotel right there on uh, the Drury Inn on uh, Ronda Lane and uh, yeah, yeah. Hello, hey, I'm here.